It's been a minute. Let's do this. Hi guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here what's up don't forget to hit like and subscribe and do not forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified when i post new videos so today we are talking about something that should affect all nail techs so every nail tech works with some type of nail enhancements and we work a lot with these chemicals so it's important to understand how these chemicals exactly are working and what can make one brand different from another i'm sure when you're shopping you see one brand versus another and you're like minus price and packaging what really makes these chemicals and these products different that we are using so i'm breaking down the chemicals that are used to compose these products that we use in our everyday nail tech life we're going to start that right now So the first things first, what is polymerization? So if you missed a video that I did a while ago about nail chemistry, I'm gonna leave a link here and down in the description box. And I highly recommend go checking out that video before you watch this one, because then this will just make a little bit more sense to you. But what is polymerization? Let's get into that. So coatings. Coatings are anything that covers the nail. So it can either cover the nail by hardening upon evaporation and it's gonna have a physical reaction like your regular base coat, your top coat, regular nail polish, stuff like that. Or it's going to cure or have polymerization and have a chemical reaction like the nail enhancement products that we use. Monomers are the molecules that make up these long gigantic chains of polymers and the chemical the reaction that happens between the two is called polymerization. So understanding how polymerization works is going to be very useful to you as a nail tech. Because again, then we can tell what makes each brand different from each other. How are they chemically composed? So let's talk about that. So let's pretend for a second that we're chemists and we are making our own monomer liquid polymer powder or enhancement system. And we're going to start from scratch. So how does one do that? What are the ingredients that are go, that are going to go into making these products? So each type of product is made from a different but similar type of monomer. These monomer molecules are just waiting for something to trigger this polymerization, this chemical reaction to happen. So the first ingredient we need to add is called an initiator. An initiator molecule is going to energize and excite that monomer molecule. But the monomer molecules are like, no, we don't like it. This is too much. And they can't handle it. So they try to get rid of this extra energy by latching on to one another. They try to attach themselves to the end of one another and they just want to pass this extra energy on. They don't like it. So eventually by doing this, they get all tangled up together. And this is what actually makes the product start to harden. Your initiator molecules, they get their extra energy from heat or light. So you ever notice when you maybe went to the nail salon or maybe you do this with your clients now, you tell them to hold their hand up to the light. It's because that heat is what's going to trigger that energy, which is going to release it back to the monomer molecules and it's gonna speed up that process a little bit quicker. They get that energy from the heat and the light. This is also why you notice that in the warmer months, you don't really have problems when you're kind of doing your acrylic application. Why it sits nice, your application, your beads are just working. And in the colder months, we've seen a lot of TikTok hacks and everything. And we all know in the colder months, it's runny, it's loose because that initiator molecule does not like cold. It's going to react better with heat and warmth from the room and so on and so forth. So liquid and powder, they get their energy from the heat or the room using what we call thermal initiators. But then we have gel products. They get their energy from what we call a photo initiator. Photo initiators, what triggers that is when that hand goes into that UV LED light, that's what's going to trigger it for your gel products. So two different types of initiator, but nonetheless, we need that initiator that's going to start to trigger that polymerization. So when it comes to setting time for different products, you notice that when you're working with different brands, different products, they're all going to set differently. 
And have you ever wondered why? Well, if you did it, I'm going to explain anyway. So after the initiator ingredient comes next called a catalyst. So the catalyst is a substance that speeds up that chemical reaction by taking those initiators to work more efficiently. This is what helps nail enhancements harden so quickly. So for example, let's say I'm going to use young nails for an example because they have their acrylic system. And if you've shopped with them or if you're familiar or if you're not, I'll just explain. They have three different setting times for their powders. So you have like, I think it's like 30 seconds, 60 seconds and 90 seconds. And they call them something, three different names, whatever. But three different setting times, the catalyst and the amount of the substance is, is how they're controlling the set time for their product. So they can say, we're going to add a little bit more of this substance to speed it up even quicker, or we're going to take some away so that it sets a little bit slower. So this is how they have control different brands of how they want their products secure and set. So for your UV gel products, they use an additional chain of monomers that join quickly together to create polymers that are called oligomers. So this is what's going to give gel its like kind of sticky consistency. And this is what helps gel products harden so quickly and cure so quickly. Because without this ingredient, gel products would actually take hours, hours to cure underneath that LED light. So your products that don't undergo a chemical reaction, like our enhancement that we just spoke about, they go through, again, what I said before, a physical reaction, meaning they harden upon evaporation. There's no chemical reaction happening for these products. So your regular nail polish, again, your base coats, your top coats, they all fall into this category. They don't polymerize or cure. They harden upon evaporation. These products don't contain any of the ingredients that I just mentioned or undergo any type of chemical reaction. They have what we call a more simple polymer chain reaction happening with these chemicals. So nail wraps, if you're familiar with fabric wraps, silk wrap, linen, fiberglass, all those things, your glues and adhesives, they all fall underneath this category of simple polymer change. So this is why those products aren't as durable as your gels and your monomer liquid and polymer powder is because those systems that are enhancements have what we call a cross link polymer chain. And that's what makes it so durable because it's a little bit more bonded for those chemicals to kind of unite and make the products harder and durable. Whereas the more simpler polymer chains, they tend to soak off easily, they chip, and this is why nail polish is more prone to chipping because that chain reaction isn't as strong. But these products do contain a special ingredient that one of them is called your plasticizers. So this is what's gonna help keep your product nice and flexible for you to work with. They also have UV stabilizers, and this is gonna help control the color stability and prevent sunlight from fading and discoloring when you put polish on and walk out into the street, it doesn't change with the sunlight. So that UV stabilizer, it's going to help do that. That plasticizer is going to keep it fluid. So we are allowed to use it, paint it on the nail, so on and so forth. So now that we've understand how these products are made, it helps us better understand, again, the chemical and the physical reactions that they undergo to become that actual product that we're purchasing in the store, buying and using every single day. So maybe I've answered some of your questions. So maybe just dropped a little knowledge for you if you didn't know. And it goes to show that honestly, no matter what brand you use, minus setting time and packaging, they're all basically chemically the same thing. So again, guys, I always say to you, don't be fooled by one brand saying, oh, we have this and we're this and we have the best this and that. No, you really don't. You just have maybe a little bit more of this or a little bit of that. They control how they want their product to be. But a lot of the times, again, like your favorite purse or something, and they say a lot of stuff is made from the same, they're all made in China, but it's just packaged different and you're paying for the name brand and the packaging. It holds true for nail products as well. This is just a marketing technique. Again, I do recommend um, looking at setting time for certain things. If you are a, new, a newer tech, like something like Mia Secret, their setting time is a lot more easier for a new tech versus something that you buy in a local mom and pop shop. Those tend to set very, very quickly. So minus that extra substance that is added into your the product when they're kind of composing it, they're all basically going to be the same thing. And I love the chemistry behind nail products. And this is one of my favorite parts in teaching this nail chemistry and just every learning about the products that we're using, because a lot of us just jump right into it and we just see and do, and we don't really question why. 
Why does this do this? Oh, that's why this does this. That's why this looks like this. And, you know, going back to the basics, going back to the chemistry and the foundation of the nail technology world, it really answers a lot of those questions that helps inform us. And also it can help troubleshoot any problems that you might have as a nail technician. It might help you educate another nail technician or educate your clients because those are the ones that you think they might not care about something like this, but it makes you sound very educated if you can actually like say, well, actually this product, blah, 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 blah. Actually, this is not really better for you because so on and so forth. So knowing about the stuff chemically and how it's composed and how it works, how it's broken down, definitely can benefit you. Also, I just want to say that I know I've been a little MIA on the channel. It's because I've been working on a super duper special project, which I'm so excited to show you guys and share with you guys. But I have been filming, I have been documenting and I'm going to start a new little series that's going to start next week for this little special project that I have in mind. So don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when that video and that series begins next week. Again, if you guys have any other questions, comments, or anything, do not hesitate to leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.